anyone that wants to come up and participate, feel free. Feel free to come up. This is a learning supportive space. Definitely feel free to come in, raise your hand, and I'll bring you up to the stage. This is the part where we do breakdown of questions. There is one recall, there is one reasoning, and there is one application question, okay? Now again, application questions are a lot harder because you're having to pull on a theoretical knowledge of the person in the scenario to be able to pick a correct answer choice, all right? So let's get this working, y'all. Put your hands up, I see Shayla. Hi, Jenny, welcome to Clubhouse. I see you over there. And guys, feel free, by the way, um, you may notice that the room is a little bit smaller than usual. I've had my VA go through, we've had some spammers in the group um, that are not social workers, and I wanna keep this a social work space and not spamming with Forex and crypt uh, cryptocurrency and crap like that. So be sure to follow me and follow the study group um, that way my virtual assistant knows not to kick you out because she's not going to know. Um, if you follow the group already, you're, you're good. But there have been a lot of spammers I've had in the chat um, lately when I've done groups. And I want to make sure this space stays safe and it's for us. Okay, so make sure you follow. Hi, Kayla. Um, <laughs> all right. All right, oh, come on up, y'all. Don't be shy now. Y'all in here for a reason. But yes, please, please feel free to follow um, during your live. There's a Monopoly house at the top. That Monopoly house, I hope you guys see it. I'm not sure everyone's going to be able to see it, but during your live, has a Monopoly house. You should be able to follow the club and, and follow me just to make sure that you don't get booted from the group. Um, a lot of times now, in order for people to come into the group, they have to be approved by me. Um, so just be sure to click on the Monopoly house. All right. Um, just to follow. Anyone else? Did I miss anybody? Oh, there's Loretta. Hold on. I see you. I'm trying to bring you up. Okay. Madeline, I see you. Hold on. I'm bringing you up. Hopefully Clubhouse hacks right today. Okay, Madeline, I'm trying to bring you up. I think that's everybody. I don't know what's going on. I'm trying to get you mad. <laughs> trying to get you up, Madeline. I don't know what's happening. Um, why I won't let you up. Try um if you want, try popping out of the room and popping back in and see if that helps. And I'll try to see if I can get you up. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna keep rolling. I'll try to keep clicking to see if I can get you up, Madeline. I keep trying to do that invite speak. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started, folks. Let me do the first question of the night. So a 36-year-old woman is approached by her new boss who has noticed that despite working for her employer for many years, she has not advanced beyond an entry-level position. The boss hears that she is a good employee who works long hours. The woman explains that she has not asked for a promotion because she knows she's not as a good of other um, as other employees and doesn't think she deserves it. She explains her long hours, but saying that she is not very smart and has to check over all her work because she is afraid that people will laugh at her if she makes any mistake. On reviewing her past evaluations, her boss notes that there are only minor critiques in her overall evaluations. Her boss notes that there are only minor critiques and they've been very positive. Which of the following personality disorders would best describe this woman's lack of job advancement? So we have three choices. A, narcissistic personality disorder. B, avoidant personality disorder. C, schizoid personality disorder. So let's start with A. Do we keep narcissistic personality disorder or do we throw it out? Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. All right. Let me take it out. Now, B, avoidant personality disorder. Do we keep it or throw it out? Keep it. Keep it. Okay. Schizoid personality disorder. Do we keep it or throw it out? Throw it out. Throw it out. 
All right, hold on. Let me take that out. All right. Why would it be avoided personality disorder? Don't get quiet on me now, y'all. Y'all just <laughs> said it. Why would it be avoided personality disorder? Because of her uh, lack of intentions or wanted to uh, excel in um, on her job, she avoids um, anything. Like she said, she has to check her work over and over again. So she does that to to make sure everything is cor correct, because she could tweak herself. And she um, look at herself as you know, I'm not I'm, I'm not that person. I don't think I, I'll be the one. So she avoids all all that. So she wouldn't be laughed at. Mm -hmm. That is good stuff. So avoiding personality disorder is characterized by feelings of inadequacy, hypersensitivity to criticism, and the need for reassurance. As a result, a person with avoiding personality disorder, they tend to be pretty reluctant to take a risk, engage in challenging activities, which often results in someone being um, having impairment around interpersonal and occupational functioning. All right, so yes. That is correct. Good job, everybody. So that would be considered what type of question? Um, a recall question. Recall and? Application. Yes, it would still be considered application. You're having to recall the concept, but you also have to know what it looks like. So that's the application piece. Good job. That is why I tell people uh, when it comes to the disorders, you got to make it come to life. There's too many of them to try to memorize. The best way to get through disorders is to find out what do they look like in real time. It makes it easier to stick. All right, so we're going to go on to the next one. This should be an easy one. All right, which medication is most used in treating psychosis? A, um, Xanax, B, Haldol, C, Viagra, D, Prozac. So let's go through them. A, Xanax. Do we keep it or throw it out? Throw it out. Throw it out. Okay. How dog? Do we keep it or throw it out? Keep it. Keep it. C, Viagra. Do we keep it or throw it out? Throw it out. All right. D, Prozac. Do we keep it or throw it out? Throw it out. Throw it out. Okay. So why is how dog correct? How does is the antipsychotic medication? It, yes, it is, Loretta. Yes, it is. All right. So that's a good recall. All right. A member of a veteran support group says that he will set fire to a government building in order to prove his anger and exact revenge for sending him to war. The group social worker should A, diffuse the situation and inform the group that violence is unacceptable and that the worker would be legally obligated to prevent it. B, explain that fire setting is illegal. C, wait and see if the group confronts the fire setter. D, point that the meeting's purpose is to support veterans and that setting a fire to a government building is not within the agreed upon goals of the group. All right, so let's go back and look at A. Do we keep A or do we wanna throw it out? Throw it out. Yes, throw it out. I agree. Okay. Let me take that out. B, explain that fire setting is illegal. Do we keep it or throw it out? Throw it out. Throw it out. C, wait and see if the group confronts the fire setter. Keep it. Okay. D, point that the meeting's purpose is to support veterans and that setting a fire to a government building is not within the agreed upon goals of the group. Throw it out. Okay. Mm. Why would, gotcha. Why would C be the correct answer? Wait and see if the group confronts the fire setter. Because you're bringing that back to the group, letting them decide, mm. kind of confronting the problem. Yes. Oh boy. Guess what y'all? I didn't got y'all again. It's out. <laughs> C is out, 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 out. All right. So let's talk through this question. Okay, somebody's blowing up in the chat. So let's let's go back. A member of a veterans group. So I always want to point out 
you know, what type of modalities is this? Is this one-on-one -on -one or group? It is group. Says that he will set fire to a government building in order to prove his anger and exact revenge for sending him to war. That is the presenting problem. Now, here is the kicker. The group social worker should. What type of question is this, first of all? This is a group question. You're looking at the dynamics of the group, bringing it to the group, what they should feel like should happen. It shouldn't be upon the group social worker. So this is, Shayla, an application question. Whatever you see, the social worker should. It's just like saying first, best, best, next. You're also pulling on what you know about group dynamics, group development here. So that would be intervention with clients. So looking at what the presenting problem is, it's a support group, right? So we got to know what a support group is. That's the other part, what type of group it is. That's also intervention with clients. So looking at this, this guy is saying he will set a fire to a government building in order to prove his anger and exact revenge for sending him to war. What is the first thing you need to do? Now, C would not be the very first thing. You're going to see a lot of first, a lot of answers that may be like, oh, this would be something I would do. But is it the first thing that you're going to say when someone says something like that? C would not. Now, D, point that the meeting's purpose is to support veterans and that setting a fire to a government building is not within the agreed upon goals of the group. Okay, that's a maybe. So remember, when we do four answer questions, you want to get to your best two first. So I'm going to keep D. B, explain that fire setting is illegal. That would not be the first thing I would do. So I'm going to take oh, it yeah. out. Now, we are down to two. A, Diffuse the situation, inform the group that the violence is unacceptable and that the worker would be legally obligated to prevent it. Or D, point that the meeting's purpose is to support veterans and that setting a fire to a government building is not within the agreed upon goals of the group. Now, if you have to choose between two at this point, I need you to go back and look at the underlying presenting problem. One, it's a member of a veteran support group, remembering what type of group this is. It's a support group. Mm -hmm. Now, the other piece of this is the presenting problem. He will set fire to a government building in order to prove his anger and exact revenge or sending him to war. One, this is a safety question, right? Yeah. So that's number one. Two, we need to reinforce rules, right? So but if I had to look at between A and D, based on what I know about structure of groups and based on what I know about support groups, D would not be my first choice. A is going to be my first yes. choice. Now, do you see how I was able to break that down based on presenting problem? Not only the presenting problem, but you're also having to pull a different things here again. Intervention with clients is an application question because you're having to pull on what you know about what is presented to you, what type of modality it is. This is a support group. You also have to pull on what you know about the structure of groups. And this guy is saying something, of course, is not okay. You have to, of course, diffuse it, but you also have to reinforce what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. And also letting them know, like, hey, I'm going to have to report this. If this is what you got to do. I am a mandated reporter. Yeah. You know what I mean? So those things are important. You see how I'm able to not only look at this question, break it down, but also I'm pulling on theoretical knowledge that I know from the content area that I'm able to pull to be able to know how to answer that question. This is most of your exam, master's in clinical especially, a lot of people really, really, really struggle with application questions because one, they have a study guide that they can't read that's usually if it's too abstract or they don't have knowledge of examples of what it looks like in real time. ASWB isn't the fact that they're making it harder with these type of questions. In real life, they want a licensed master level or clinical social worker to be able to look at a client 
look at their age, look at the development, look at the modality, be able to know effective modalities to use, depending on what that client has going on at the time. So when you study, you cannot study just to memorize. It does not work. It doesn't work. You will, you will have gaps and it will not be good. You have to make this information come to life. You have to be able to apply it. Okay. That is something I, I talk about all the time when it comes to those first, best, next questions or should questions. You got to be able to pull it apart. Now, if you're not able to do that, then we got an issue. Then that means we need to have another conversation. That means that the study material that you have is not reflected in the learning foundation that you need to pass. But that's most of your tests right there. Right? This was a tough question, but you see now how I was able to pull those pieces out based on the information that I knew. Any question about that? Yeah, I was looking at a, um, but um, the ending part is what what kind of confused me when it said legally obligated to prevent it. That kind of tripped me up. How so, Maurice? Um, I don't know. I was like, well, what can the social worker do to prevent it? But if it says something about reported, um, I guess it's the word. Mm hmm. Ethics, right? Mandated reporting. That's also the other piece I forgot to mention um, that I didn't mention there. This is between chapter, depending on what study guide you got, chapter three and chapter four, intervention with clients and ethics. That's another part of the application. So if you're not familiar with that, that tells me there's a gap in knowledge, right? So again, be very careful when it comes to these questions. You have to make sure you have a strong foundation to stand on in order to answer these questions correctly. Now, keep in mind, you guys, all of this now for me is muscle memory. When I was studying, just like you guys, I can tell one from the other, okay? <laughs> so keep that in mind. It took a lot of repetition and practice. Um, now I've been teaching for almost three years now, uh, so it's muscle memory. So I'm able to pull apart and look at a question, know exactly what content area it comes from. When you're looking at this, I now train people to look at it based on the content that they read. So they're able to recall it, but they're able to apply it. Another thing I tell people when looking at human behavior, a lot of you guys hate human behavior, hate human behavior. Why is it important? Because we gotta know where our clients are in the lifespan in order to pick an intervention that's appropriate for them. Uh, Shayla, you know all about this, don't you, Shayla? <laughs> Pick out Shayla because she was coached by me. We're just yes. you on a test date. So, Shayla, uh, do you remember some of the application questions I would give you that were just like this? How were you able to improve upon pulling them apart? Because you got really good at it, very skilled at it. Oh, yeah, just breaking down the question and knowing what it's asking for, what's like the presenting problem, being able to pull on what's in the stem and not adding to it to get to my answers. Mm -hmm. And that that's very important. I know Shayla comes up the top a lot, but she's very, she's built her confidence up over time. So again, repetition, learning how to break things down again with the human behavior. And I'll leave it this last thing I'll say of the evening. Um, human behavior is the foundation, right? What I mean by that is you are having to know, something legally or developmentally about that client in order to pick an appropriate answer choice for them. If you can do that, you're golden. Now I see a couple of y'all in the chat. I'm gonna need y'all be coming up here. Um, <laughs> instead of being in the chat, uh, I see a couple of y'all in here. I'm gonna have to start dragging y'all up because I see y'all in the chat just be blowing up. It's like, why are y'all up here? Don't be shy now. Uh, some of you guys have some good explanations that I see in there. So um madeline what did you okay you asked if one was b so b yeah number one was avoiding personality disorder b oh i know at least i see you in up there <laughs> i'll be calling y'all out because like, y'all need to get your butts up on the stage okay but nonetheless i hope you guys i gave you something to think about again if you need more support you guys know where to find me um i do have a session so i have to get ready to go um but again Practice, practice, practice. Know that you can do this. I believe in you or I would not be pouring into you as much as I do here. Keep going with your process. Keep doing what you're doing. And I will talk to you all soon. Please take care and have a good night. Um, you'll catch the replay of this shortly, probably by tomorrow or within the next 24 to 48 hours, uploaded into the podcast 
Um, again, you can check out that podcast on any um, channel that you listen to podcasts. All of those links for my social media and as well as the consultations are in that link tree that you'll find across all of my social media. All right. You guys have a good night. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm.